to the Aboriginal channel. On this episode, I'm going to go into the old books and then read about what the authors said that the Aboriginals' structures and towns looked like. So right here, we got the book, The History of Alabama and Incidentally of Georgia and Mississippi from the Earliest Period by Albert James Pickett. Now, Albert James Pickett was born in 1810 and died in 1858, but they republished his book in 1896. When the dolls rose and the white folks was down somewhere taking names, this is when they republished this book. So basically, they propagandized all the literature, you know. But in this book, it talks about the town of Mobile or Mobilia down in Alabama and how it looked. It says right here, the town of Piachi was strongly fortified. It says right here, the town of Mobilia, it stood by the side of a large river upon a beautiful plain and consisted of 80 handsome houses, each compact it is enough to contain a thousand men, so a thousand men in each house. They all fronted a large public square. They were encompassed by a high wall. They were encompassed by a high wall made of immense trucks of trees set deep in the ground and close together strengthened with cross timbers and interwoven with large vines. A thick mud plaster resembling handsome masonry concealed the woodwork, while portholes were abundant together with the towers, capable of containing eight men each at the distance of 50 paces apart. An eastern and a western gate opened into the town. It's another book right here called Footprints of Vanished Races in the Mississippi Valley being an account of some of the monuments and relics of prehistoric races scattered over the, its surface with suggestions as to their origin and usage by A.J. Cunning in 1879. Now, right here in the preface, it says, although nearly all the accounts of the expeditions of the earlier explorers of the continent of North America contain notes of striking memorials which were met with in their journeys, such as mounds, embankments, fortifications, and the like, still all such notices were too meager and superficial to give them any special scientific value. Right here it says, Captain Carver, in the account of his travels in the years of 17 1766, 1767, 1768, describes what he was convinced was a military work, which he accidentally discovered upon the bank of Lake Pippin. This was long before it was known that America had any antiquities. Concerning it, he says that its form was somewhat circular and it flanks rest the river. Though much defaced by time, every angle was distinguishable and appeared as regular in fashion with as much military skill as if planned by Vuban himself. Now, Vuban is Sebastian Vuban, this guy right here. Scroll down to where it says his Vuban fort design. Now, right here, you're going to see that this looks like the fort that's in Florida. And then the rest of these look like the star forts that's all around the country. Now, let me go back to what it said. It said that and appeared as regular and fashion with as much military skill as if planned by Vuban himself. So whatever he's seen looked identical to these forts right here. Now, right here in chapter eight, it talks about the garden mounds, the food of the prehistoric races, fish, probably one of their main resources, the use of the ditches, within their city walls within their city walls okay they're all their towns and city had those walls like the previous video showed right here is a book this book is from 18 36. It's written by Professor C.S. Refined Squay. It's called The American Nations or Outlines of a National History or the Ancient and Modern Nations of North and South America. Down here it says, it talks about the languages. It's comparing the Aboriginal American languages to the languages in the rest of the world. And it says that trying them by the languages, the Americans will appear to be children of the earliest human families. It talks about all these other historians who have written books and lied. It says, I have not 
imitated, therefore, the lazy writers who have pretended to give us histories of America and have commonly produced mere sketches of it, full of neglects and defects. He says they have, however, acquired some reputation either by style or manner, but they have degraded history by giving sketches instead of it. He's talking about Robertson. He's supposed to be a renowned historian. He says, but Robertson, although praised for his style, because he lies, is only his unfaithful and imperfect imitator and the obvious slanderer of the American nation. But when it comes to what the structures the American Indians had, it says the Americans had long before Columbus large cities built of stones, bricks, or wood with walls. With walls. Ditches, temples, palaces. Ditches, temples, palaces. Some of which were immense size and population. Some of which were immense size and population. Now here it says the most civilized nations had even colleges and universities, canals and paved roads, splendid temples and monuments. Okay, last book we're going to go to is this right here. It was written in 1671. It's called America Being the Latest and Most Accurate Description of the New World, containing the original of the inhabitants. Okay, I'm just going to show right up here an image in the book of some aboriginal people. Right here, you got two Caucasians right here. I think they slaves holding up this queen, Indian queen right here. In the background, you have what looks like the walls of a castle. Inside the book, you have a section right here on California. So right here you have what looks like the Caucasians with their muskets and the aboriginals right here with their feather crown. Now, I know it's hard to see, but you can't see any of that long hair coming out from down on the sides of these crowns that you see in all the other sketches. So right here it says about the California people. Much about the same time Marco de Franciscan undertaking a voyage in these parts reported wonders at his return of the plenty of golden mines, stately cities set out with magnificent buildings, the very gates whereof were enriched with turquoises, the very gates whereof were enriched with turquoises and other precious stones, and whose meanest inhabitants went glittering in gold and mother and pearl. Through the history books, which has all been a lie, so therefore, if it's a lie, then what's the truth? If it's a lie, then what's the truth?